You're listening to The Revolution of Regenerative Medicine, a podcast with me, Dr. Gregory Lawrence. So every single one of you guys I may have mentioned before is here because I was thinking about you and your particular situation, clinical situation of you or your loved one or something that you said to me. And, um, and so I wanna, uh, I'm gonna tell y'all right now what it was. Uh, so Greg is with us. Greg's a CEO of a, 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 a big corporate entity here in uh, Tennessee. And uh, uh, Greg uh, ha- uh, has gone every year or two off to a, uh, you know, a pretty big, uh, reputable uh, medical center uh, that does executive physicals is one of the things that they do. And uh, Greg may not remember this, but one time he said to me, hey, you listen, Dr. Lawrence, um, you know, I go off and do this thing and they always do the same thing. They do some imaging, they do some lab studies, they do an exam on me and they go, they I get finished and they go, okay, man, you're good. And I don't really feel like they're giving me anything to do that's really going to make an impact on my health. And so uh, I probably said, you know, hold on, Greg, I will be having a talk here in a, several months or a year or whatever. So uh, I don't know if you remember that, Greg, but he told me that. Um, I also want to introduce Ion, who is a executive level person at a, 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 a wetlands conservation outfit that everybody's heard of. And uh, Ion has a fascinating medical story. I knew her back when she was researching all the research to figure out how she could uh, uh, dispense with her diabetes and I thought what is this lady talking about they didn't teach us in medical school that you could cure your diabetes with a surgery and she said well th- your doctors don't know the research and so she was just about to travel internationally to have uh, a, a gastric bypass ruin Y surgery done um, because she knew that that surgery actually changed your metabolism and I didn't know that so I'm like what are you talking about and so uh, uh, so she ended up barely meeting the criteria by the skin of her teeth and was able to get that surgery done here in the U.S. And, and I remember her telling me, Dr. Lawrence, in the waiting room, my blood sugar went from diabetes level to, I mean, in the recovery room, from diabetes level to 86, and it has my fasting blood sugar hasn't been above that since my surgery. And I just said, you need to go to medical school and teach. And so anyway, so because of complications for her diabetes, including I think an MI, um, uh, we've, she's really suffered from some poor cardiac function. And so she's very, very close to being on the uh, cardiac transplant list. And so I know she's gonna have some good questions. And she actually was part of a clinical trial and she um, received bone marrow stem cells that I think that were deployed directly into the heart, correct? And so um, I'll let her share a little bit of that experience and see what um, questions she has. But I know cardiologists right now who are, are, are giving for cardiomyopathy and weaknesses of the heart, uh, they're giving the adipose drive stem cells into an IV. They're not doing a direct deployment into the heart and they're really seeing pretty impressive results. And they're, uh, this is one of, the, one of the IRB approved trials that several different uh, groups out there that are advocating SVF and they all are working really closely with the uh, human trials ethical process where you use the uh, IRB uh, investigational review board to approve a human study and they're doing that so they can collect data uh, there, there's no requirement doctors are allowed to do these surgeries without entering uh, patients into a trial but uh, uh, I own was part of a trial in which uh, she uh, had uh, bone marrow and so we'll get to that in one second so m- my third of four uh, panelists here in this round table is Wayne and uh, Wayne is a uh, really uh, fascinating uh, patient of mine who uh, was a, a bank upper level bank guy and knew that he wasn't going to get anywhere else in life past that ceiling unless he went into business for himself so he made a big jump and uh, ended up uh, growing into a you know s- several million dollar software company and uh, he's just uh, a guy that his employees love and he is a guy that is uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna throw out his age, but I think he's older than 70. And the guy was trying to find the the Kramagal place that had the toughest guy, so he could fight people tougher. <laughs> That's true. That is true. We're gonna give him the mic in a minute. And uh, 
And so then he all of a sudden uh, started really feeling bad for the first time in his life and um, really went, had a lot of workups, went out of state, um, went to some of these uh, reputable medical centers, and he finally just, he wouldn't let go. And he finally found, I'm not going to give anybody uh, the high five, but they might be in Tennessee. Um, he finally went to a medical center that literally uh, cracked his chest, cut open his heart, fixed an aneurysm as well as a big, big blood clot that was floating around in his heart. And this was in his ventricle, not his aorta. It was a crazy, crazy thing. Guy recovered pretty quickly. He might be the only guy that I meet that's older than 70 that I don't think should do stem cells. He's done pretty well on his own. So SVF might not be right for him, but we'll talk about that. So uh, my concern about Wayne, seriously, is that um, that is a, a massively insultive surgery, even though he seems to have healed up really well from that. If there's anything that can be done that would cause uh, the scar tissue in that heart to remodel, because uh, scar tissue always leaves a little weak spot. Um, and that's one of the things that SVF has done, is it's remodeled areas that have scars, so there's a really good potential uh, for that to be something that can be helpful for him. And then our last round table member is George, Georgia is a wealth management guy, and uh, it seems like I've been connected to George uh, through uh, family members of his that have really blessed uh, my life, and uh, it's a small world. I've known lots of people that know him or know of him, and so I'm really happy to have him because he's got a family member that's gone through some uh, uh, central nervous system brain uh, um, uh, degenerative disease, and uh, so I knew that, uh, again, this was, these were the four people that as much as anything are the ones that kind of made me make the final jump to do my due diligence to go around the country and talk about talk to the biggest experts that were doing this and they're from every specialty you can imagine and uh, just all realizing that this technology really might change medicine thank you for listening to this episode be sure to subscribe to my podcast the revolution of regenerative medicine I'm Dr. Gregory Lawrence, and I look forward to you joining me again soon. Music